Hey, it's Mark Pulsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable, we've got a lot of really cool topics to discuss. We've got Eric Peterson from landopia.com, Tate Litchfield from frontierpropertiesusa.com, David Benalis, <laughs> Facebook whisperer from simplelifeland.com, David. That's it. Mike Zeno, the Zen master. Uh, Mike, what's your website? Uh, it's the landguru.com. The landguru.com. And last, but certainly not least, you know him. You love him. And we're going to talk a lot about what he's doing over at landmoto.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Let's just get into it, Scott Todd. Let's talk about landmoto.com and some of the changes going on over there. Yeah. So, so basically, look, uh, for a long time, land investors have been kind of uh, ignored when it comes to these like land websites, you know, these platforms, these marketing platforms, land, watch, land, land and farm. They're, and, and one company is buying them all up. And what they're doing is when they buy them up, they are making you go to the higher tier. So what they're doing is they are monopolizing the marketplace and driving the price up. And I had a lengthy conversation with uh, the management over there. And basically they're like, ah, we'll survive without you. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So here's what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, allow uh, others to, to leverage the traffic that I've already generated off of Landmoto. So what I did was I basically went back and we allowed for users to join. Okay, so like Eric Peterson joined. And he is uh, listing his properties on there. We have like 10 or 12 people right now that are listing their properties on Landmoto other than my own, okay? And basically what we're doing is we are generating traffic for those people that are listing their properties. So we have three pricing strategies and they get to the people who are providing their properties on the website, they get to list their properties on there. They get to leverage the traffic that's already there. They get to leverage my buyer's network. We're taking these posts to Facebook. We're, sh we're taking stuff out to Craigslist to drive more traffic back to the website. So we're using the posting domination tools to like spread the word. And I think that, uh, you know, I know that Eric had a sale on the platform last week. We had four sales on the platform last week. Um, there's a cool component in there as well. That's, I, I think it's really, really cool. It's different from anything else that's out there. And it has the wholesale component to it. So in every single listing, you can put a wholesale price that gets hidden from the retail customer that's just on the website. You have to be a wholesale member. Yes, you have to pay to be a wholesale member. It's cheap. It's like $59 a year. It's a small wall to keep people out. But once you're in there, you can actually go in there and look at wholesale property. Today, right there, right now, there are 22 properties available wholesale. Um, and so it's going to continue to grow it's a great way of looking for wholesale land, but that wholesale price is hidden from the general marketplace. You have to be a wholesale subscriber to do it. So look, if you're, if you're okay selling some of your land wholesale, great, it's a great way of doing it. It's a great way of moving property. If you're looking for the retail sale, they are happening up there, okay? It's a, it's a new platform, so it's a shift for my customers because you're using my buyers list and my, you know, people that have been to that website. So it's a little bit of a shift in their mindset. They have to understand that like, hey, I'm not dealing with Scott necessarily anymore, but all is good. And in fact, we, we put out the model last week for sales. So Eric Peterson, what was your, what was your take on it? How was it, how difficult was it? Or how does it compare to like uploading, let's say an ad in the land mode versus like land and farm or lands of America? Um. It's pretty straightforward process. Uh, it's actually, in a sense, it's easier. Um, there's a few less steps. Um, you know, Land and Farm or uh, Lands of America, you've got typically multiple screens you need to go through and a whole bunch of check boxes to check and uncheck. And um, I actually, yeah, Scott's got it set up where it's basically one page that uh, you're using to input your information. Um, you can put some HTML in there, link uh, display photos large and, and different things like that. Um, so it's, 
It's pretty simple. Uh, at this point, I've just done it myself, but I'll probably train a VA to do it at some point here. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, Tate, it would be cool to have LG Pass integrated where you say, list this on Landmodo and just press the button. Is that, yeah. is that coming down the pike, Scott? Wait, Scott, you're on mute. Sorry, sorry about that. I have a developer that's actually working on that to where uh, there'll be a button in LG Pass that actually says send a, send a land moto and it will, take the, it will take the ad content and send it over there. I also, they are also working on, and this has proven to be a little, little bit harder than what I dreamed, but it's okay, we'll get it. Uh, a WordPress plugin. So if you're on WordPress, which I think most people are, if you're on WordPress, you can put it on your website. There'll be, you know, when you're looking at your posts and everything, there'll be a little link right there that says send a land moto. So you, pl you uh, launch this plugin and send that over there. But Mark, I got to tell you something. This is the one thing. It's not out yet. It's going to be out this week. And I'm very, I'm, I'm like, if there's one thing I'm excited about, it's like this one thing because it's completely different. So let me tell you what, what we're doing. Okay. We, we are asking the customers who are not buying from us. Like we're asking, you know, if they're on the mailing list or anytime we send out a blast, there, there's a link there that says, don't see what you want. Tell us. Okay. Okay. So then what's happening is we actually have people that are right now completing a form. They, they go on, on our website, they complete a form. It's 10 questions and they tell us like, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. This County or this, uh, this area or this acreage or this type of price or this one component. And then what will happen is when you're a subscriber. So like, for example, Eric, okay. So Eric will be able to go onto this one website and soon he might be able to get text, uh, not text, email alerts too, but he'll be able to go onto the, to the page and look and say, hey, let's say that this person's looking for land in this county or this area. He'll be able to say, hey, and it's, they're identified with a number. So like number 25, number 25, I think, that you, I think that this property might be a match for you. And so instead of having to wait for the customer to always contact him, he'll be able to look at these leads of what people want and he'll say, well, maybe this is a good fit for you. He'll provide the URL. It gets emailed to the customer. So it's a reverse spin that we can now be proactive in reaching out to the customers. They then get an email that says, hey, uh, we might have a match for you. Come look at this property. And if so, we're trying to match the two together. But how cool is that? Mike Zeno, is that cool? Yeah, it's very cool. I'm actually really excited with this. I've already signed up. I haven't uh, gotten properties up there, but I plan on it. I have a bunch of wholesale properties that I'm going to put up there, and I'm I'm really excited about this new platform. It's uh, it, it's a it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. David Manalis, how important is the platform? You know, it all depends on the traffic it gets. You can have an amazing platform with no traffic, and what's the point? But what Scott has done is create a massive amount of traffic coming in there. And that's the key to anything working is having, how many eyeballs are going to be on this? You know, I know he's taken a lot of, you know, great care in making sure the traffic is there and the type of advertising he's done. So I'm signed up, I'm ready to load some properties on there. Hearing that Eric sold a property on there, I'm excited. Uh, I'm gonna end this call right now and I'm just gonna go on Landmoto. <laughs> yeah. So let's, you know, Eric, you know, walk us through the sale because, you know, why, why did it sell so fast on this new platform? Was it the price? Was it the property? Like, how did you, how'd you market it? Man, I, <laughs> I don't know at this point. I, it was, it was a very simple sale. Um, you know, uh, not a whole lot of questions. Um, the buyer was motivated and ready to purchase a particular property. They, they contacted me through Landmoto. Um, I provided a little bit more information, talked about how the process works and they were ready to go. Um, and that, that property, I had been marketing it through other channels. Um, my website, Craigslist, um, land watch, um, it was probably as far as it had gotten so far, um, for probably three to four weeks. And I had just put it on Scott's website, um, maybe a week before. And uh, we did uh, mention it in one of his uh, buyer list emails and it sold super quick. Yeah, I, I think the advantage that 
uh, the land moto platform has over like, you know, these co-star group conglomerate platforms like land and farm or lands of America or land flip, whatever it is, is that, you know, Scott's in that business, right? Where land, the people that run it, they're running lands of America.com. They're a, they're in the business of selling advertising, right? They're, they're, they're not in the business of selling your property, right? That's, that is like, well, we hope you sell your property, but they're really in the business of, of getting as many people on that site to advertise and upsell you into a feature listing, right? Or put a big banner on there. Like that's where they make their money. So they want to get as many people on that platform as possible. And next thing you know, right, you know what we have? We've got that jam store where everybody goes in, they take a look at all the jams, they're overwhelmed because there's, you know, so many on the shelves. And then they go to Land Moto and they actually, that's where they go buy, right? Because it's, it's a different marketplace, it's a different platform. Scott, is that fair yeah, assessment? It, it, it is fair. And that's why, um, that's why we're, we're bringing people in in waves. So if you're listening to this and you, and you look at, the, at landmoto.com forward slash pricing, and it says like locked right now, it's simply locked because we have to balance. We have to balance the number of providers on the platform with the number of customers that we have because we have to generate enough customers to make sure that we can facilitate the core value exchange, which the value exchange that we're trying to do is sales. Okay. Like if we're not generating sales, well then there's, I mean, there's no value exchange, right? So you either need to get, come up with leads from this system or, or sales. And it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going, it's like the, you, know, you always hear like, which came first, the chicken or the egg. It's the same thing with this platform is that any platform for that case, you know, like you got to have properties up there for sale. And then at the same time, you've got to have people looking at it. And so you have to, you can't overwhelm them. You have to have a good ratio. So if the ratio gets out of whack, we have to like curb, uh, we have to curb, uh, you know, one side of the equation because it's supply and demand. It's economics 101. Yeah, Tate, you had a couple sales uh, last week. What, where'd you get those sales from? You know, they were coming uh, mainly from Craigslist, but uh, actually this week we have kind of not put Craigslist on a hold, but we're transitioning everything over to uh, Land Moto because, I mean, that's where the sales are right now. That's, that's where the traffic is. That's where, you know, Scott's not only investing time, but he's investing money into bringing sales to the community. So, Hey, if Scott wants to spend his money doing that for me to get sales, <laughs> then thank you, Scott, right? Like you're a good man. That's very kind of you. So how could I not have my properties for yeah, sale? Yeah, I, I, I still would, I would still market on the 10th most traffic website in the U.S. No, 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 we're not. not no offense to Land Moda. We're not stopping there, but hey, if we can double down, that means we're going to get double the sales, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Mike Zeno. Is this going to change the way you do business? Because I, I know you love the phone. Yeah, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help. It's going to be a bigger platform for me to sell wholesale on as well, as well as retail. I mean, I'm not opposed to retail, although I primarily do wholesale at this time, but it's just going gonna, gonna to be a lot more exposure. And um, I'm excited by it. I really am. Um, I've been, uh, uh, ever since he sent that, waiting to get up there. So I just had a few things I got out of the way, and I'm going to be listing right away and so it's gonna yeah it's gonna change you know how it's gonna change i'm gonna sell more property <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I will tell you i i was looking at a property this is this is gonna be kind of funny like i i was looking at the uh, one of the i was looking at two properties on the website and i looked at it and i'm like i think that there was a property there for i think it's still there for like 900 dollars, right mark and, and i was thinking like holy crap, $900. I just want to buy it because it's $900, right? Like, <laughs> I, I, why would I not buy a $900 property? And then I'm looking and there's a property in uh, right now in North Carolina. We have one in North Carolina. Okay. And it's, it's near uh, Cherokee, North Carolina, which I love that area. I'm like, I might buy that. I, I, I might be buying all the properties. I don't know. Like, this is dangerous for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, this is like Scott going into Best Buy. Like he's like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna browse. Bad. Next thing, I'm like, oh, wait a second, that drone is fifty yeah. percent off. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I will, David, I will tell yeah. you, I will tell you, it was kind of hard though for me because you know you want to talk about like abundance mentality, Mark. I there's a guy, he's been buying property from me. Um, I I don't know. He I think he's bought like six properties from me. 
he's a very good customer. And he actually called me yesterday and he's like, Hey, what, what, what happened with your website? Like I see this thing where it says seller, that's not you. And I explained it to him and he's like, Oh, okay. Cause I'm going to buy a piece of property from somebody else. And, uh, and I'm like, no, 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 you can't do that. You know, it takes you outside your comfort zone. It's okay though. It's okay. Cause there's enough for all of us. Right. But still, it's kind of funny. Like you're my guy. No, no, you can't take your money anywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I, I would have those same feelings. I, you know, David Benalis, um, right now, being the Facebook whisperer, right? <laughs> um, what, what, how's it going on there, and how's that platform working today? It's getting a little finicky. Um, the stick rates on you know, some auto posters are it's not doing so well, um, as well as admins are starting to get a little, you know, egomania. Ego, ego maniacal. There's a good word there as far as, you know, flagging posts, but it's the usual. I mean, haters come with every platform, uh, probably not Landmoto. Um, I still love it. I'm still going to sell property there. You know, we're going to be everywhere. We're not going to be just the one place. You know, that was a lesson I learned earlier. So I'm going to be on Landmoto. I'm going to be on Facebook, be on Craigslist. I'm going to be on back page with Tate. What about eBay? My, 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 one of my students made 338% cash sale. Come on. Here, oh, was, was, that, was that branded on eBay? No, that was Seth. That, Brandon did that as well. Now this was Seth. Oh, my gosh. My, my course is coming eBay. out. <laughs> I'm going to do an eBay course. That's it. <laughs> eBay gets no love. I, I, I'd, I'd rather. <laughs> Just go ahead. <laughs> Stop. I don't know. It's not like I recommended a book. <laughs> <laughs> that's true I, is, am i the only one who's completely uncomfortable that we haven't made fun of eric peterson yet on this podcast <laughs> is, is everyone feeling the tension except me oh, man. all right let's let's pivot and let's go to the power of one word consistency when i say consistency eric peterson what does that mean to you um, I think in this business, it means consistency in mailing and marketing. Mailing and marketing. Every day. It's like, what does that mean consistently? Like, is that every day? Is that seven days? Is that five days? Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Tate mm -hmm. Litchfield, consistency. What are your thoughts? Consistency and habit go hand in hand for me. If it's a habit, you're going to be consistent. If you want to do well in this business, you have to form habits that make you consistent. So that's mailing, that's marketing, that's Craigslist, that's back pages for me. That's all these websites that I know produce money. Then I've got to be consistent. I want to be, you know, everywhere. So that's what consistency is for me. David Benalis. This might be jumping a topic ahead, but you can outsource consistency. Um, do you want to save this for the next topic or just want to dive in? No, now? I mean, no, I, yeah. we, can, we, can, we can jump ahead and then jump back. Okay. I had a hard time being consistent on my own. So Scott Todd had his baseball bat. He brought it to boot camp and he hit me over the head with it. And that's my automation and my delegation. <laughs> the baseball bat got me going. And so I had a hard time consistently mailing. So I would have a huge, you know, mailing and then like take off a few weeks and then another huge mailing. Finally, I just, I have a VA doing that for me, uploading a 250 every single Monday. I'm consistent because someone else is doing it for me. My marketing, someone else is putting up ads for me. I'm consistent. <laughs> so I'm outsourcing my consistency. I well, think you're consistently making sure that work is consistently done. I'm consistently doing those con things consistently also. Unless you're consistently outsourcing the consistency <laughs> of someone making sure that it's consistently done. And that would be having a manager. And I like that idea. <laughs> right? So that you could do that. And then you could just get that report on Friday. We consistently sent out, you know, at least 20 offers a day. And we consistently, you know, using posting domination, you know, put out 124 ads a day. We would list it on land moto. We listed on, we sent out neighbor letters, you know, maybe we went on Facebook because I am David Benalis. <laughs> if you're consistently doing everything else you're going to consistently make money what else are we in this business for mike zeno what are you doing to, what, are you, what are you doing consistently i'm gonna go with what tate said we're, listen we're all 
consistent right now, all of us, everybody in the world, we all have daily habits. We all brush our teeth. We all drink our coffee. We all do things routinely. So this business is all about developing new habits, new habits that you do every day, whether that habit is outsourcing it uh, to, uh, you know, your VA, making sure that they're doing, but this is all just about daily habits, things that you have to do daily and daily, every day you have to do them. It's like, um, years ago, I, I met a Tai Chi teacher and I said, hey, listen, I, Tom, how long did it take me to good, get good at Tai Chi? And he's like, oh, I'll take you 10 years. I go, 10 years? 10 years to get good at Tai Chi? And he's like, listen, 10 years is coming either way. Either you're going to be good at Tai Chi or you're not. And I'm like, oh, that makes a good point. So listen, the next year is coming. The next month is coming. The next week is coming. Either you're going to have 100 mailings out, either you're going to have uh, you know, 50 ads out, or you're not. It's just daily habits. I, I love it. I love it. That, that could be your tip of the week, Mike Zeno. I just realized I blew it on that. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Todd. <laughs> no, nothing drives Scott Todd crazier than people that are not consistently working the business, whether they're in flight school or they're one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, Scott's lost all his hair because of <laughs> students not consistently mailing and marketing. So, Scott, what – you know – what do you do? Like, how do you get people to, to ingrain that habit? Well, first of all, I think, I think that it ultimately begins with uh, your why, right? Like if, if you're, um, if you don't have that burning desire to change whatever it is that you're trying to change, well, then you can't, uh, you can't, you can't do it. Right. So like, you got to find a ship to go burn. Don't really go burn a ship, but you know, like go, go find that one thing that's going to propel you like, Hey, I'm going to go do this no matter what. And maybe it's, maybe it's a money thing. So Mark, you know, um, I was telling you before this call, I was telling you about the, the author JJ Virgin, right? Like, uh, you know, and here's, here's this author. She's written a couple of books, but, um, she was basically saying in this interview that, um, in 2008, like right in the, in the big crisis, she basically went and she found somebody, her, her whole thing for growing uh, is to go find someone who's doing it and then basically hire them, right? So, you know, basically get them to be your coach. She went and she found a guy that was doing what she wanted to do, which was to be an author. And she went and hired him and it cost her a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So she wrote a check for a hundred thousand dollars so that she could become an author as well. And that number basically, she's like, it, it literally drained her bank account right in the middle of the financial meltdown which is a stupid thing to go do, you know, and not too many people would go do it. However, she knew that she had to have her back up against the wall in order to, to come forward in order to, to achieve what she wanted to. So if you don't have that burning desire uh, individually, well then you, you, maybe you should write a big check and uh, give, give yourself that burning desire. Like I'm going to do this because I'm not going to flush the money down the toilet, whatever, whatever way it is. Yeah, I, I remember um, Justin Williams was talking about um, how he got into house flipping on our podcast. Yeah. And he yeah. wrote like a $50,000 check to a coach. Yep. And he's like, it was, he's like, I got nothing out of the coaching except for the fact that I had to get my money out. And right. so, you know, that was his burning desire. Like, you know, it, that was enough to just have him consistently work on learning how to flip houses. I mean, and now he's doing like a million bucks a year. But it yeah, started with commitment, right? Right, and and that's really what it is. Like you know, when when you have that desire, when you when when you're going to do this, well, then there's nothing that's going going to stop you. I mean, like you are unstoppable, and it's those it's that that drive that you need. I don't care what it is that you're trying to achieve, and that's what will bring the consistency, right? You know, um, what you don't want is you don't want to be that guy that that you know goes to the gym and says, okay. I worked out today, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the calories I just burned while I'm trying to lose weight. Well, that doesn't that's not gonna solve the problem for you either, right? Like, you know, don't relax. You know, keep yourself on the on the ropes and keep swinging, keep hitting with the bat. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, your why changes. Like, I remember in 2001, my why was to spend time with my children, my wife, and and have total freedom, and flexibility to raise my children. Right? Well, now the kids are older and they don't want to be with me. So now my why is, you know, to spend more time with my wife and really have that relationship be solid to have, you know, more freedom and, and flexibility. And actually, you know, with Land Geek even, you know, grow the pie larger, right? So it's not about me anymore. It's about 
how can we grow this pie so big that like, you know, Mike and Laura can take, you know, six months off and travel the world and David can spend more time with his kids and Tate's got a baby coming. Right. So how, how do we have it so that, you know, everyone can, can sort of create their why and not go through all the pain and suffering that I had to go through. Right. Which is where I, I think a lot of the, you know, the, you know, the tools and, and the, the training uh, really come in, but I'm not sure where we got there because really when we get to training, we got to talk about VA hiring and VA systems. So um, as our last topic, let's talk about what's going on in the world of VA hiring. And David, you brought it up first. So let's just start with you. Um, what's the most challenging part of hiring and training a VA? The most challenging part is creating a process that's simple enough where you could explain it once and they get it. And then creating a feedback loop that they can check their own work. Uh, I think the big stumbling block might be, uh, here, upload these mailings, but you don't tell them exactly, okay, you gotta go to this file. You gotta you know, create a separate CSV file for this. Then you go in here, then you upload them here, and you gotta wait about four minutes for it to upload. And then this is how you check it. So you really gotta get into your own brain and understand exactly why you do each step and explain that. I think if you get that right, the rest falls in place because now you're just you, you hire five VAs for you know, a one hour task. One will do great. And it's just a numbers game after that. But if you're not getting the process explained well enough in the beginning, it's just going to be doomed to fail after that. Tate, how do you, how do you create the communication feedback loop with your VAs so that you are on top of it and you know that they're getting it? Uh, I asked for, well, at the end of all of my videos or tasks that I ask them to do, I ask for feedback. Hey, do you have any improvements or are there any shortcuts that you can think of to make this job more efficient? Uh, feedback is greatly you know, appreciated. And on top of it, I have them kind of give me basically a summary. And at first, you're going to get a lot of feedback like, oh, this step didn't make sense. And then you'll notice as your task or as your assignment gets you know, more refined and polished, the amount of feedback that you're gonna get is gonna slowly dissipate. And soon enough, it's just gonna be foolproof. And you can have a random stranger who knows nothing about what we even do, do the job that you need done. So it takes time. I mean, that's, that's the thing with working with VAs. And I'm sure Scott will elaborate on it, but he's got a really um, good principle about how much time it actually takes to train one of these VAs. And, and that's what it comes down to is time. Yeah, I mean, Eric Peterson, how, how do you have the discipline to step back and, and take the time when you know, okay, this is gonna take me three minutes to do, right? But if I train a VA, it might take, you know, them 100, it might tra take them, you know, 90 minutes to teach them that three minute task. And I don't want to spend the 90 minutes because I'm busy, right? I've got this I'd rather do and I've got that I'd rather do. And how do you have the discipline to step back and say, you know, I'm going all in and I'm getting rid of this three minutes for the rest of my life? Well, <clears throat> I think sometimes, you know, it, it comes down to a, a motivation point. You know, um, it could be that um, you're, you have a vacation schedule coming up and you're like, you know, I know that this task needs to happen while I'm away and I, I don't want to have to do it every day while I'm on vacation. So, you know, now is an excellent time to get that sorted out and, and uh, you know, get that process in place. I mean, so, so certainly that's one aspect of it. And then, you know, outside of that, I think it's just, uh, you have to realize that uh, as you grow this business, you can't continue to do everything, including those three minute tasks. You've got to have a way to be able to outsource those and um, get some help and be able to focus on building the business as opposed to, you know, doing the tasks within it. Uh, Mike Zano, when you started hiring your first few VAs, which really wasn't that long ago, what, what were the challenges for you? Was it hiring the right person? Was it creating the system? Was it working with them? What, what was it for you? Yeah, I think for, I think, well, to answer that, I think that, 
we started too late. We really did. Not too late in terms of not recovering, but too late, later than we should have. And I believe that people in this business tend to fall into two areas, too soon or too late. You first need to understand the process before you farm it out. You have to understand how to get a list, how to scrub a list, how to price, you know, all that stuff. You have to know how to do a due diligence because if you do it too soon and you don't understand the process, then you're not a very good teacher to somebody you're trying to train. So there is this whole idea of like putting your time in and, you know, and getting the discipline to, you know, to make this happen on your own and then you farm it out. There's also the other side I see where we fell in and I see many people is they do it too late. They get so accustomed to doing everything themselves. They just all of a sudden can't believe that anybody else could do it any better than them. That clearly they're the best ones that can do this job. And then they get stuck doing everything. It's like, oh, it's only going to take me a minute. It's only going to take me a minute. And like you always say, it's going to take you a minute over and over and over again. So now a year down the road, you're still taking all those minutes and doing this. So I think it, uh, it's it's a difficult thing for people to wrap their head around. Really, I think a lot of people, aside from, you know, we talk about the typical uh, pain points, which is uh, people scrubbing lists and then due diligence. But one of the real big points is what you're talking about here, this VA uh, management or even getting VAs. They either start too soon and they don't understand the business and they're trying to find something out that they can't comprehend. Therefore, they're a very bad teacher and they're not going to be able to train people correctly. Or they wait too long and they have all this invested time and it's like, well, I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm just going to keep doing it. And then you're just in this rat race and, you know, we've been there and it's that's, although you're making good money, it's not a fun feeling. So I think you got to kind of weigh out, you know, you want to do it sooner than later, but not too soon and, and definitely not too late. Yeah, absolutely. And two of my, my new, my two favorite new trainings in the toolkit are Frankenstein the list by Scott Todd and then the whole due diligence training by Chris Clark and Mike Warren. And really you can just take that education piece, um, do it yourself a few times and then, you know, truncate it down and make it super simple for someone else to do because i mean scott would you say those are the two most difficult pieces of the business when you first start they are yeah i mean like the the list and then the due diligence it's it's where a lot of people get you know hit, hit in the head too many times and they don't want to they, they don't like it right like you know, that's, that's, uh, that's Mark, you know, the old saying, like, uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? So that's the, those are the two big punches in the face, you know, especially when, when you're trying to do so much of it. The third one is the marketing piece, right? Like the third one is, it takes a lot more marketing than what people think it, it does. And so if you can get the, if you can get the plate spinning on the mailings, then you get the plate spinning on the due diligence, and then you get the plate spin on the marketing. Well, man, you've got a good foundation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, now we're at that point, gentlemen, where we're going to ask for your tips of the week. And by the way, um, it would have been nice to have a female perspective. Cynthia Tripathi was supposed to be on this podcast, but uh, I think we, I, I screwed up the invite, so I'm sorry, Cynthia, if you're listening. Um, but let's start with Eric Peterson with his tip of the week. Here, Eric's like afraid now <laughs> to give his tip of the week. Jot not. <laughs> Well, I'm going to actually change it here at the last minute due to the uh, content of our podcast. Um, so I don't know if you mentioned it, you, you maybe have, but um, it, in working with VAs and, and building processes, um, lists of tasks and so on, um, I just love using Process Street for that. Um, the ability to create these checklists add uh, videos explaining how to do something as well as texts and various tasks, you know, check boxes and things. Um, plus being able to go back in and refine it as you're working with the VA to improve on it um, is just really, it's a really great tool for working with your VAs, I think. Better than Airtable, Eric Peterson? <laughs> uh, from the task perspective, yes, but Airtable is good for other things. So. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, I think Process Street is a, a tremendous tip of the week, um, even though we've probably mentioned it 15 or 20 other times <laughs> oh, on other man. podcasts. It's, you know, you can never go back to fundamentals enough, right? <laughs> brutal. It's, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's brutal. How 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 far, how much farther can I push Eric into the point where he's like, you know, Mark, I've got better things to do. He doesn't show up anymore, right? I like, know. man, like, I I feel like uh, 
I feel like a ninja after dealing with you for so many on so many podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's Eric, rough. it's it's only because we love that we're hazy. <laughs> uh, honestly, process streets a great tip. Um, let's go haze Mike Zeno. Mike, what's your tip of the week? Well, that we, follow- that, that we get to then shame you about afterwards. <laughs> well, this is going to fall in kind of line with what we've already been talking about. It's uh, it's my Zen quote, my Buddha quote. It's what and. What you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create. Now, the way that I think this applies to today, <laughs> this is a good one. This is, is that, good. Is we're talking about uh, VAs and systems, and I tell people when I talk to them that what you need to do is visualize, and this comes kind of, this came kind of from the swim lanes that uh, uh, Scott and uh, talks about at the, uh, <laughs> at, the, uh, at, the, at the boot camp and Tate, we were talking about this. You basically imagine the business I'm just, I'm just going to look down. You just imagine the business as the I'm way you I'm burning want it. incense as you tell this, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. You visualize the business like it's a play, right? Or something that, you know, and you put all the characters in. And initially, you are every character in that play. But eventually, you farm it out. You have to have vision. You have to see it first. Or if you don't see it and, and believe that this system, because believe me, whether or not you identify with it or not, you have a system, whoever you are right now listening to this. And, and whatever, however you handle this business, there's a way you do it. You do the buying and the selling. You're doing it all yourself. You already have a system. You just haven't identified it yet. So once you can kind of realize that system and then you can, you can start to visualize how you can pull yourself out and how you can start plugging people in. And then, you know, eventually you're just hanging out there, you know, on your phone, managing them going, yeah, I want to have my coffee. That's a good deal. Do that one, you know, and, and that's the reality of it. So I think that quote's pretty relative to what we talked about. I think, I think it's great. It's great. <laughs> um, Eric Peterson, do you want to throw, a, throw a, a dig out or no? <laughs> no, I like it. All right. <laughs> Tate Litchfield, what's your tip of the week? All right. I got a good one this week. So um, we talk a lot about follow-up with our buyers. And one of the things that I found to be really successful is a quick reminder text message or some sort of response to them. As soon as we hang up, say, hey, as I promised, here's this. If you ever have any more questions, feel free to text me back. Or sometimes we just want to follow up with people maybe in a day or two about a text message we received on an inquiry. So I was, you know, searching the the internet and I came across an app last week and it's called Hedwig, H-E-D-W-I-G. I I can see Scott smiling. You don't like it? Go, Go ahead. Go ahead. There's certain things I like about it, certain things I don't. Um, But basically, my tip of the week would be some sort of automatic text response to people. And I've been using this one. I'm not 100% pleased with it because it's not, not ideal, but something along these lines um, I thought to be really helpful. People are responding. Most of the time they're responding like, who is this? What's going on? Because they can't respond. Uh, to it, but I like the idea. So they get an A for for effort and credit. But um, curious to hear what Scott thinks and why he's going to hate on it. What do you <laughs> Scott, what's wrong with Hedwig? Well, it was mine. It was yours. Oh my gosh! Oh. Wow! Oh, yeah, Tay, you just dropped the mic. I did. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. It's, a, it's okay, but guess what? Have a good night. This is why I show up with five. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> nice. Oh, All right, so, but you know, Hedwig is, a, is an iPhone app. It what is. Us? So, yeah. I mean, who has Android, really? That's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? I mean, this is cool. Set your signature, left, let Hedwig send your messages. It's really cool. Um, there's a couple of things, like I said, I don't love about it, but I love the fact that I can have a prefabricated uh message and just says hey great talking with you today if you have any other questions feel free to call me or text me back at this number uh look forward to earning your business and uh you know whatever else you want to say but it's it's really nice it's just a click of a button all right i just downloaded it yeah you're gonna like it i'll send you a message awesome awesome great tip great tip um david facebook banalis Facebook Whisper Banalis, what's your tip of the week? Uh, first of all, I know the listeners can't see this, but anytime we have a tip of the week and Scott Todd has that Cheshire cat smile, we're like starting to second guess ourselves. 
It's, it's like, man, it's such a head game. <laughs> I don't ever want to play poker with you, Scott. What do you have, David? Show us your cards. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's a book. Okay. It's oh, a, book. A book. A book. Really old book. Pulling a Mike Zeno on us, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm always reading a book either about sales or about marketing or the two. Uh, it's called The Wizard of Ads, Turning Words into Magic and Dreamers into Millionaires. It's a really concise book. It's like a quick two-hour read. Uh, it, just if I could sum this book up in one uh, one sentence, it's you know we're not in the land business. We're in the attention business. It's all about getting the attention and keeping the attention throughout the entire customer journey. And quick read, I recommend you pick it up. All right, the Wizard of Ads. I've got the uh, here it is, dear reader. Is this Ray Bard? This is Roy Williams. Oh, Roy Williams. Okay. Uh, yeah, Roy Roy H. Williams. I think the I seven like, laws uh, of the advertising universe an like, energy of words, masses of people and intellect and emotion, time and money, sight and sound, opportunity and security engage the imagination. Well, I tell you, I, I've got it right now on PDF. So it was like what? 99 cents or even free. No, it it's cute. free. It's free. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. <laughs> tip. Free tip. <laughs> I just, I just put this into my Dropbox file and I can, uh, Read Mark, this. Mark is going to have someone else read it for box. him and provide a summary. <laughs> and you're not joking. <laughs> that I mean, you, you say that like Mark doesn't read. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> is there anything wrong with that? No, no. Like I finally understand it. Like as I'm doing dishes, I'm thinking, man, how can I get this off my plate? Literally, like, like how can I get this off my plate? Okay, a dishwasher. Okay, how, who can put stuff into the dishwasher for me? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to do anything anymore, Mark. <laughs> I, I mean, the thing is, like, if like five years from now, I will probably have like a serious heart condition and look like one of those people, like this character from Wally, <laughs> from doing nothing, <laughs> right? Yeah. But in the meantime, it's all good. Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? Okay, Mark, uh, th this one is specifically for Eric because, you know, he did create a cool Team Scott uh, t-shirt some time ago. I know he's a graphic artist and we can all benefit from this. Check out this Chrome plugin. It's called What Font. Okay, so oh. here in the, in the chat, uh, I can't get over there from my computer here. In the chat, I'm going to put it in the chat for you guys. There you go. I want to make it easy. Okay. So here's a Chrome plugin that you, you get into your Chrome browser, What Font. You, you turn it on, you move your mouse over to the font and it tells you what font it is. So as you're designing stuff, whether it's, you know, for a Team Scott t-shirt uh, or whatever it is, you just, <laughs> you like a font, you just go over there, you look at it and then you can go download the font and then you're off to the races. Is there a way to edit out that tip of the week? Because like, <laughs> Jot, like that, that makes Jot Not Pro look like the greatest tip of all. Yeah. Hold on a yeah. second. I'm trying to figure out how this is going to sell land. Yeah, Scott, how is this even relevant? I mean, this isn't even, what is this, a design podcast now? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tate, 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 you know, like when, when you're writing fancy ads that sell, that actually sell, yeah, you could use different fonts. Oh. <laughs> Put the bat but, down. Put the bat down. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's the secret to 198. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh. Oh, 198. <laughs> it's all about the Chrome right. plugin with the right. what, 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 What'd you do, Tate? One, 192. I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay. It's I'm downloading right. it right now. I'm down. Okay, good. Eric, Eric Peterson. Sold. But we're, we're right. hazing Scott. But is hey, it, listen. Is it, is next that a time. Good tip? Yeah, no, yeah. That's a that's a, of course that's a good tip. It's it's a, it's a nice tip. Uh, it's nice. <laughs> It's a yeah. great tip. What are you talking oh, about? Very political. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though because there's so many times you're trying to build to add something, you want to match the font, and you can't figure it out. It looks crazy. I mean, it's good to know. I mean, you know, you know, what the problem is being Scott Todd is that the, the, he's set the bar so high for himself. Like every time, I'm like, this is going to be a life changing tip of the week, <laughs> and then he comes up with like, here, check out what the fonts are on a website on a web page. Hey, we yeah, I mean, I use stuff. tools like that all the time. So for um, your graphic design job, right? Yeah, but <laughs> it also transfers over to my land business as well. So all right, <laughs> yeah. all right, oh, it could just be a lack of imagination. I Tate. guess. 
I'm living yeah. square. These, these round tables are fun, but you know, there's nothing like me as the host now having to get my own tip of the week and then taking the abuse. I'm excited. I really am. <laughs> All right. My tip of the week is, um, I think was, was Eric, were you talking about, or Scott was talking about sending out a survey, right? And asking the, uh, his list, like what property they wanted or, you know, it's like a 10 question survey. And it made me think of this new site called wiser.com. W-Y-Z-E-R-R.com. So check that out, guys. And let me know what you think of the gamification of a survey. It makes, it makes it fun. Ask 25 questions in under 60 seconds. Playful surveys, happier respondents, better feedback, and it, you can create a free account. Let me see what the pricing is on this before I go too crazy. Yeesh. $99 a month. Yeesh. This is a terrible tip of the week, Mark. That is a horrible tip. Why wouldn't I just use Airtable and create this for free? Eesh. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Well, you can, have, can't wait, wait, wait. You know what? You get a, look, you get, a, you get a free trial. After you sign up, you get to survey 100 customers before you have to activate your subscription. So, ouch. You just there trying to make go. Eric feel yeah. better. Uh, maybe not the best tip. You're making Eric feel better here. That's all right, all right. I got another one. I got another one. <laughs> Amazon.com forward <laughs> slash. What a oh, great, a great website, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Amazon.com. Who doesn't love that? Amazon.com <laughs> forward slash ideas. Prime. <laughs> where it's like, they're like taking Amazon, they're going after Pinterest. Because we have a very visual medium with our land. We can upload it to Amazon which let's face it is another huge platform. That's not a bad tip. What is I, it? Amazon.com forward slash, forward slash ideas. What do you think? It's like a wish list. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like Pinterest. It's like, it's, it's, it's the Amazon way of going after Pinterest. Okay. So you kind of put up your, your stuff and you put up ideas or you put up whatever it is. Could be your land. Because is Amazon just, doesn't let you sell land. Is it just Amazon products though? I don't think so. I think you can use your Amazon account and put stuff up there. I don't know. I really like I really like Wiser's free trial though. So it's all good. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, taking the abuse and being on the Land Geek Roundtable this week especially you, Eric Peterson, from Landopia.com. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tate Litchfield, Mike Zeno, the Zen Master, Shh. David Benalis, Shh. the Facebook Whisperer, and, of course, Landmoto.com, Scott Todd. Um, just a reminder, boot camp is full for Scott's deal, but we are anticipating because it's only June and boot camp's in August. We will have cancellations so get on the wait list for that. Um, and then also you can start booking for October in Orlando. And if you want to start having passive income without the traditional headaches of real estate, get on the call with Mike or David. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Get your questions answered. Learn more about flight school. We are in the process of filling up July flight school now. And, um, and get on a call with them. Learn about the toolkit. Um, whatever it is, uh, you can even just ask Mike, like, is, or David, like, is Mark really, you know, that jerky for real? And like, you know, with the tips of the week, or is, is this all an act? I get that question every call. Really? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> oh, now he's self-conscious. You got to, now, can't now, I'm the, now I'm going to go the other way and just be super polite to Eric. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Excellent tip of the week. Let's move on. No. All right. I want to thank everybody. And uh, I hope you guys are getting value out of these round table calls and we will, are we going to do it? We're going to, are we going to end with the, all right, Scott, lead, lead us with the count. All right. One, two, three. Let freedom ring. 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 That was really ring. good. Ring. That was good. Not bad. Well, last week too. Not bad. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks everybody. 
See you guys next Thanks. time.